And, and Tracy, if we're going on vacation, is Tracy a mountain lady or a beach lady? Cool. Tracy, you ready? I'm ready. Go. Ty, you ready? Always, man. Time out. Dude. Tyler, we got a beautiful day up here in Rochester. Who the heck are we sitting down with and taking a time out with today? Well, man, Kevin, I'm impressed by this whistle that I've had for four years, man. That that ball really hummed right there for the first time in a, in, a few, in a few blows, man. But uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Western New York area, uh, the DFW area, Fort Worth or Dallas, you're all welcome, I promise. Um, today we have the executive, executive director at the Rochester Rotary Club. She goes by Tracy Dreisbach. Tracy, thanks for being on the show. I wanted to ask you a real personal question starting this off. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, I have a very strong opinion about this question. I want to know what you think. What is your favorite Finger Lake out of the Finger Lakes? Because I'm going to probably judge you really hard about this. <laughs> well, I live on Canadagua, so I'm going to go Canadagua. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a home that's a home that was easy that was too easy all right what if we drove by tracy and you could design your own bumper sticker what message would you want on the back of your car to send to the world Jeez, um that's a tough question i think it's just you know uh live life to the fullest and be happy love that i, I love the simplicity and, and tracy if we're going on vacation is tracy a mountain lady or a beach lady oh so it depends i i I well, I like to go out to the mountains and lakes, so I much prefer the mountains and lakes. But every now and then, a good beach is needed. So okay, a little yeah. mixture. Okay. It is. Have you have you hiked any of the forty nine peaks in the Adirondacks? Uh, I have not, but my husband is a forty sixer, so he has Ooh. officially done them all. So oh. yes, mm -hmm. that's wow. his that's his gig, not yeah. mine. Yeah. I'll meet him. I'll meet him in Lake Placid at the bar and yeah. say, "Hey, I'm going to yeah. meet you over here. I'll have a drink when you're ready." Absolutely. So. <laughs> All right. We, the karaoke song that you could sing with your eyes closed and not even need to read the words on the screen. What song are you singing? Hey, oh my gosh. You know what? Save me by jelly, uh, jelly roll. I could sing that whole song. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to sing for you. So no. <laughs> oh. I was waiting. I didn't know. We I miss very listeners, my voice, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tracy, did you see his speech when he won that award a while back? Yeah impressive talk yeah. about somebody who took hardship and turned it into a positive and is making an impact and a difference you don't hear that often and it's awesome to see i think that might be my bumper sticker too when he i mean when he was fired up at the end and he was like and ladies and gentlemen that's why the windshield's bigger than the rear view mirror <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah! yeah i know you know impressive that's cool. that's that's amazing i i did i have to go back and read that speech now tyler thank you for that Mm -hmm. all right i got one other question where are you taking tyler and i out to a meal out in canadagua rochester what is the spot tracy absolutely must have tyler and i try the green front there's no other place wow in that was so fast yeah. that was so for fast. sure the green front you have the best food possible it's okay. a bar it's a neighborhood bar atmosphere but it's kind of like the cheers you walk in and you're guaranteed oh. to know a ton of people so all right Food is fabulous. I wonder if Ken Johnson took me there. Do they have wings? They do. Okay. I think I did. Ken Johnson uh, from uh, Leonard's Express, I think, did take me there. Oh, so. I'm sure he did. I'm yeah. sure. Absolutely. Is he a regular? Mm -hmm. I mean, he seemed to know everybody in there when we walked. Uh, I, and when you're, well, I guess I wasn't born and bred in Canadagua, so I'm not your, you know, local, local Canadaguan, but, um, you know, there are a lot of them that were born and raised and you walk in and everybody knows them. So, so funny. yeah, that rolled off your tongue really nice. That Canadaguan. Canadaguan, yeah. I've right. not heard that before. <laughs> Lots of practice. <laughs> That's awesome. And Tracy, I, I, I want to kind of go back, you know, let's kind of dive into you, uh, just how you got brought up, right? And who made Tracy, you know, Dreisbach as she is today. And I saw that you were a SUNY Brock Brockterian. I'm just, I just made that up on the, the IA in there. Um, <laughs> sure, sure you know about the Sunday sauce on the West side over there, if I had to guess. Who, who was Tracy be before college? Um, you know, I think I was someone who just really um, – I, don't, I, I really, I guess, was always looking to get involved in working with people and giving back. And, um, you know, I, I was a cheerleader and, uh, you know, went to HFL and, um, you know, enjoyed that, um, 
I just enjoyed people. I had, you know, I was friends. I tried to be friends with everybody. I wasn't, you know, a set, a set part of a group. So I kind of just kind of rolled with it, right? Like just, you know, hey, some of my, uh, some of my best friends were just, you know, great people. And somebody that some people might be like, whoa, a little intimidated by going up and talking to or whatever, just because they might have, you know, be wearing the leather jacket or something that would have been like, oh, I don't know. Um, no, it just got along with everybody. And I think that when I went to college, I was trying to figure out what career was going to drive me to working with people. And, um, you know, I grew up with an aunt who has um, MS. She just recently passed last week. And um, I grew up, you know, um, pushing her around in a wheelchair and understanding how accessibility is really a challenge for people. And, you know, I mean, I grew up as a kid not even realizing that I'm taking her shopping at seven years old and pushing her wheelchair through the clothing racks and not realizing that I was really learning from everything that she was teaching me. And um, I think that really defined my direction in life and where I wanted to go was just that um, experience with her and, uh, you know, what she taught me, not even realizing I was learning something at that time. Isn't that the truth about perspective? Mm -hmm. I, I think in, I think I always see that like perspective continues to be the greatest teacher um, to many, right? If, if you're willing to, and here it is of that situation and it gives you a whole different perspective on the entire world. Um, that's just really powerful. And I think it's, it takes bravery and courage for people to, to be willing to, to step outside and, and to, to align with people that are different. I think it's a, it's, it's noble. Um, let's talk as, I guess, um, you did you always see yourself as a Rotarian leader or how did you find no. your way into this? I had no idea what Rotary was, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I went to SUNY Brockport and uh, majored in therapeutic recreation. When I graduated, I, well, I did my internship at Monroe Community Hospital um, and loved being there. I loved, I worked with all 600 patients at the time. I was one of the only rec therapists that was on every unit. So I had some really special um I guess at the time, patients that I would, I, I really just embraced and loved spending time with. And I used to pick them up and take them with me to every unit I went to and just, you know, really built, built those bonds and those connections. Um, and then I, I moved on from there and um, I ended up getting hired at the Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp as the program director and really didn't really even realize, you know, I, I grew up about in Honey, I Falls, I grew up 15 minutes from the camp and never really even realized it was there. And it wasn't until I was, I got married. My mom's like, hey, come get some of your stuff out of your room or whatever. And I was looking through pictures and all of a sudden I realized, I'm like, these cabins look familiar. I'm like, oh my God, I went to Sunshine Camp as a brownie. I had no idea. I thought when we went, we went so far away. I was in first grade. I thought it was forever away. No, I had actually gone there and utilized it as a camper. Um, but I started working at Sunshine Camp. And um, I started in 1997 um, there and uh, ran the camp for 10 years and loved every minute of it. Loved working with the different agencies that utilize our Sunshine Camp, um, which is, you know, bringing in over 2,500 children and adults with special needs every summer. And it's free of charge to their family. So it was, a, it kind of tied my, my youth and my experiences. At the time, I didn't really realize that's what tied me to it. And it wasn't just, I think, until we I looked back and said, that's what I think made me so comfortable to go that route in, um, you know, in rec therapy and, and doing that. And then um, eventually went on and got my master's in public administration and nonprofit management because I realized that I had the goal of, at the time, after being at Rotary for a long time, and realizing the good that they did in the world and, and what Rotary was all about um, is a service organization and business leaders who believe in giving back. That, that was me. And I really thought, um, I, I want to run a nonprofit. Uh, this is my goal. And, and it wasn't when I went to college. It just kind of evolved from my exposure and experiences to other executive directors of the agencies I worked with. And then realizing like, I can do this. So I believed in myself, went back and got my master's and uh, took me three and a half years to do it because I was working full time, but um, had a kid in the meantime during it and uh, continued and finished. So um, I was excited to do that. And then thankfully had the opportunity within my current organization at Rotary to um, apply for the executive director position when my boss um, took a different position. And I was 
part of the national search that they did. And thankfully they chose me. <laughs> so I'm happy to say that I've been here since 1997 and, uh, and love every minute of it. I was, I was trying to creep on your LinkedIn to see what you've been doing. And I was like, man, I think she found her, her groove, you know, a long time ago, which is very, I think, lucky. You know, I think a lot of people run around, at, you know, asking themselves, you know, well, what the heck am I supposed to do in this life? Um, and, and it sounds like, like, like you jump, you, you jumped right in, even when you were a brownie, you know, that's really, yeah, right. really fascinating. <laughs> that, that, I'm like, here I was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, can, can you kind of give us like, what's the, what's the biggest challenge of being the executive director at a rotary? Like what, what challenges are you seeing right now? I would say your biggest challenge is just always, um, uh, the brand awareness, uh, our Sunshine Camp has been around since um, uh, 1922, so we're celebrating our 102nd summer of serving the community, but yet we're still a hidden secret. So it's continuing to get the brand out there and letting people know that, hey, this is an organization that if you come out and you see the 157 acre facility and you see the impact that it makes on a daily basis, you'll want to be part of it, right? It's like seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. And so it's just getting people to say, I want to come. And we've been much more successful over the last couple of years of driving that um, ship and getting getting the community to say, hey, we want to do a fundraiser for you, right? Because we don't get government funding. We don't, you know, we're not, we're a United Way donor option agency, but we're not an agency that gets funding. So we have to raise it. We have to raise the 1.6 million every year. So that is, you know, continuously trying to have the awareness, which then ties to the donations, right? Which then ties to Rotarian. So it's kind of like this whole big, you need the membership, that's engaged and involved. Um, and we have 355 members right now in our club, um, which is a, we're considered one of the largest clubs in the United States. Wow. Um, yeah, we're the largest in New York state and we are 17th largest in the rotary, uh, North America, um, world. And, uh, good for Rochester. I, mean, yeah, it is, I, know, I always knew that with the amount of nonprofits that exist within our community. I mean, we're, we're a resource rich, right. But I think yeah. sometimes that goes, it's hard to unite all those, you know, bring all those together. It's almost like overload. Um, but that's, that's, that's amazing to hear that that is how, how large that your, your, your outfit is here. So that's really yeah, inspiring. I think Rotary is a connector, right? Rotary, yeah. the best part about Rotary is it's not like you're, we're not all lawyers, you're not all accountants, you're not all this. You are every walk of business life possible, retired, starting out. You know, you are, if you're a business leader, you can be part of our club. And it's that impact that you can walk in and sit down at a table and see, you know, uh, someone who runs an, you know, an Isaac Heating, or you see somebody who runs to Carlos Truck Rental, or you see all over different places, or you see, you know, the, the president of the bank over here. And then you see someone who's a sole proprietor over mm -hmm. here, you know, Image 360 Rochester or a sign maker, you know, you've got all these different organizations that are represented, but they're all there by the same ethos of, wanting service above self. They want to give back to their community. They feel fortunate in what they have they have obtained professionally, but they also believe in our community. And I think that's some of the uniqueness in Rochester in general. I think Rochester is just a very unique community when it comes to um, giving, when it comes to volunteerism. Mm -hmm. I think you see it's, it's just a very different community from some of the other um, Rotary clubs around the country that I've talked to. I think it definitely is a, a unique community. That's really, really cool. I want to go, I want to go back to that belief and believed in myself. When I went back uh -huh. to school and did all that. It's almost like I, I don't see enough people doing that. How did you get yourself comfortable to that point after 10 years? And like, when did you go from self-aware to self-accepting and then betting on yourself? You know, I think it was, I started seeing that I was able to take a strategic plan when I was hired at, to run the camp in 1997, I was handed a piece of paper <laughs> and they said, hi, welcome to your job. Here's a piece of paper. This is what we would like to see happen. Go ahead, make it happen. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Here I am, right? 23 years old. I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, what am I going to do with this? I'm trying to figure this out. I mean, I'm going through file cabinets. I'm trying to get any, obtain any information. I mean, like now, I mean, hysterical, right? I'm actually going through paper and file cabinets at that time, <laughs> trying to find things because it wasn't on a computer based, you know, savings, but, um, and really just trying to learn. But then as I was able to take the organizations that we worked with and we moved the model from 
having organizations that just rented from us to moving into this partnership model where we actually help um, design their program. We run the program staff for the program staff are hired um, by us the facility itself, and then the food services provided. And then each agency that we work with brings in the their own counselors, their direct care um, nurses, medical staff, and then the campers themselves. So they're worried about the direct care. We're worried about the experience, right? So we're providing you, well, you know, the best of what Sunshine Camp can offer. And so when I started seeing how I could, how that evolved, and then I realized, actually, I was sitting at work one day and a flyer came across my desk for the MPA, or um, yeah, the Brockport's MPA program. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I knew that I kind of wanted to do something and I was like, I think I could do that. So I said, I signed up for one class. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go in and I'm going to try. And mm -hmm. I signed up for one class. And then I realized I'm like, oh, I really like this. And I really liked the learning. And to me, my master's was far, far better, I think, than getting my undergraduate because it was much more concentrated, right? So it was something you, you a, wanted to learn. Yes. <laughs> right. And it was, right. I wasn't forced to take it because I had to I had to put it on. I was trying to say that nicely because Heidi's Heidi's a member, you know, the president of Brockport's a member. So she hears us. I want to be like, hey, but um so the um I you know I love the class and I love the professor. And then I found that there was a lot more adjunct faculty in my master's program. And to me an adjunct faculty, I think, adds an additional value than just a professor. They're mm -hmm. bringing real life work experience. It's not just theory. It's not just, this is great. I'm like, I, and I used to say like, okay, this sounds really great in theory, but put yeah. it in practice and tell me how it works, right? Like, does that really, is that really how the world works? I don't know. And uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, I learned from a lot of the adjunct faculty there, as well as, you know, your standard, your traditional professors. But I, you know, that's so why I took one class, said, all right, I like this. So then I took two classes every semester. <laughs> until I was able to finish three and a half years later and did my thesis and did all that stuff and um, loved it. I really did. And then I, I made some great friends that were in the program and they were all going in different areas of the community. You know, one's working for um, like in a health insurance carrier doing community um, grants and type things. I have someone else who works for like silver sneakers doing stuff there. Um, you know, and I had someone else who was actually working in a physician's office and she was running like a, a practice and doing that stuff. So it was kind of interesting that here I'm, you know, going in the nonprofit management and public administration, but um, you know, it was a, it was a program that taught me a lot. And I, um, I think it began to show that I, you know, I can do this. Like I, I was like, all right, I, I love new ideas. I, I think people that work with me will tell you, like, I'm not afraid to try something. I'm like, look at what's the worst case scenario. It doesn't work. Like, let's, let's try it. And if it works great, if it doesn't, we'll pivot. Right. Like, have you been if, like if I had that to do your whole life, have you been like that? your like your whole entire life. Like if you could go back or is that something that you developed over time? I think that's something I developed more over time. How did, uh, you know, you, I think, how did you get over the fear of failure or the fear of expectations or a level of perfectionism, I guess? I think, I think you're, when you, in reality is most people don't really know what's going on when you're looking at it, like I have an idea, we're going to run this event. Everything's in my head or it's in my team's head and we know it. The, the person coming to the event doesn't know what, what we think. So if something goes wrong, generally it's me knowing or yeah. somebody else knowing, and we're critiquing it on our side. But for the, if I look out in the audience, everybody else is like having a great time. Right. Yeah. So sometimes it's just, sometimes we're harder on ourselves, I think, than, than, you know, and I think if we just sit back and we relax and we realize like, Hey, oh, okay. All right. You know, yeah. The ice cream didn't come out when the ice cream was supposed to come out. Okay. Whatever, you know, but to me, like the internally I'm documenting and making changes and adjustments, but for the most part, I'm like, everybody loved the ice cream when it came out, you know? So I think it's just, I think it's just realizing that it really is. It's okay. And it's okay to be, it's okay to say, I don't know. And it's okay to say, you know what? Yeah. I messed up. You yeah. know, like, I think it's okay to say, yeah, that didn't go the way I thought it, or I wasn't happy the way that turned out, you know, and, and I'm always very open with my board. Um, I have two boards. I have a one for our foundation side of things and I have one for the club and, you know, I'm always very open. Like let's, let's, let's try it. If it works great. If it doesn't, what's our worst scenario? I don't see the, I don't see the downside being negative enough that we shouldn't try. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You're uh -huh. not paralyzed by fear, but it, I think we're hardest on ourselves. That's what the, the realization that I had that the expectations that I had on me were even higher than what I put on everybody else. So I think that was like, wow, yeah. I don't even expect anybody else to do this. And I'm like, 
but I have this unrealistic expectation on of myself. And I think ultimately, so I could come back and blame it and tell myself that I wasn't good. So I'm, that's why I'm so curious that. to learn yeah. through you because you're like, you're yeah. just were like, oh, I knew I was going to do this. And I, I would tell you, I still don't really ultimately know I have maybe a better idea, but it doesn't matter. Now it's like more been about the journey. And that's kind of what I hear looking back when you were sharing, I was doing 10 years and it, it was all kind of leading you down this way, but it's, yeah, it's, it's called life. It's there's ups and downs. Tracy, your energy is awesome. You know, I, I bet you, I bet you run one heck of a camp. I just got to ask you real quick. Yeah. What do the kids get most fired up about? Like what event is it that it's like you know, that you guys are like the staple of sunshine? So, I mean, everybody loves free swim time. The pool is a major hit, right? Who doesn't on a hot day? Um, but, you know, I think really the best thing for our campers are just when they arrive and they see the returning, the returning friends and the oh, staff. Yeah. Like it's that, that it's those bonds and those connections that they've made. And, so, you know, our kids can start coming at age seven and many of them come through 21 and then they transition to some adult programs that come out there. But they have been friends with these folks and they like, they, I mean, they call, you know, my camp director, Brandy gets phone calls all the time. Like, is so-and-so going to be in my cabin? Um, what staff are coming back? Are, you know, we have an adult weekend that we do in the fall and there's a one camper that calls and wants to know if they're going to have soda pop. Like, are you going to have pop? You know? Okay. So we'll go soda pop, you know, whatever we want to call it. Right. <laughs> Around here. But anyways, she's like, are we going to have soda? And so like, that's her that's her burning question right now in June. She wants to know in October if there's going to be soda at the camp, you know, it, I think it's, it really is just the experience. I tell camp parents a lot. Um, and, you know, when they, when I used to be there all the time in charge, I would tell the camp parents, don't be surprised on Sunday. You're leaving your kids. Right. But when you come back on Friday, they're going to be crying and don't, don't be shocked. Don't be alarmed. What they're crying for is not that they've missed you. They're crying because they have to go home. Mm -hmm. And their parents are like, oh, and the first time parents are like, oh, no, no, they're going to be so excited. And then they realize they get there. And then the, all they're doing is following their child around because they're going to every cabin to say goodbye. And then it's like an hour and a half worth of them walking yeah. around saying goodbye. So then the next year, that parent realizes I'm showing up at the very last hour or last last half hour of pickup because I'm not going to follow my kid around for an hour and a half saying goodbye. But oh. they, they truly it, it truly it provides a respite for the parents, um, the caretakers. Uh, you know, many of our parents say it helps recharge their batteries, um, mm -hmm. you know, helps them focus on maybe other children that they have that don't have special needs because that child with special needs often is the driver of their attention. Yeah. And so it allows that. But we also, our camp is completely, you would see, it has anything that you would see at any other traditional camp um, from archery to a climbing tower, to a zip line, to a train, to a splash park, to accessible playgrounds, to pools, to music and trot, you name it, we've got it. And we won't build it unless it can be accessibly, uh, is, meets all the needs of someone who can utilize it. So it, it has to be accessible or adaptable to be able to be meet the needs of everybody we have. So they, those kids can come to camp and just focus on their abilities. What, what, you know, and we are able to focus on that and the energy that they bring and make it the time of their life. That is, that is so cool, Tracy. And I couldn't be more with you. You know, I ran some camps like in Louisiana, like in 10th and 11th grade. And it wasn't like the event, really. I'll never forget. I, I, I like threw some monumental squirt gun raid one time <laughs> this one year. And the kids were so fired up about it the next year. And I tried to pull it off, but it just wasn't natural or organic. Because this this ambush was like organic, like this raid I did with me and some 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 third graders, you know. And like trying to repeat it just didn't work. But what did work were those friendships that they had, right? That that organicness. And I think I learned a lot from being an adult. Like I get so fired up about the end game. I get there. And it's pretty uh, underwhelming, you know? <laughs> it's like, but, but what's not under underwhelming though, is like the laughs I have with my colleagues and the, my peers, especially when we mess up, you know, that's where the, 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 the journey that you always hear about. Um, yeah. But, um, Hi, I want to, I want to go to one thing that you said, cause we, we kind of touched on it, like the differences between the four seasons of Rochester and why yeah. you say the first nice day, everybody walks dogs. That's not even theirs just because they want to walk a dog up in Rochester, you know? Um, and in Texas, like you're almost accustomed to it because it becomes your normal. And uh, just, just thinking and reflecting and reading this book recently, it's like the, after the first time you experience something, it becomes almost dull. Right. Um, and uh, that's where I get to learn through my kids. So Tracy, I was going to ask you, like, does it ever get old? Like, have you ever gotten old seeing those children's expressions of those emotions, you know, and how do you, cause it's only during the summer, Right. How do you use that 
because that's why everybody's probably working at the rotary. They want that feel good. They want to see that. How do you keep up that energy with your team for the entire year? Because $1.6 million is probably a lot Mm -hmm. and probably a lot of, and sometimes we can get blinded with the, what we're doing for the cause. And sometimes that cause is not present. So I see the picture behind you. So maybe you guys photography to catch those beautiful (laughs) emotions, right? But Mm -hmm. how do you keep that energy up? How do you, how do you keep reminding people why they're doing what they're doing at the Rotary for this camp? Yeah. So I think one of the things you said, it does it ever get old? No. Um, Because it is um, every year you have fresh faces. Every year you've got new staff, you've got new energy, new groups. And so when we're not doing summer programming, we actually, the camp is a resource for the community. So we have other churches, schools, nonprofits that use it. So it is a year round facility that we're open year round. Um, But I think it's everyone who works here. And I am so fortunate to have a team of outstanding individuals that, um, have, have decided to work here and have, you know, and many of them have longevity like I do. Right. So, um, I have, you know, they, I think it's the same feeling, right. You, you feel good about what you're doing. You know, that every, every action that you're doing is making a difference in a life. And -hmm. then when we get the feedback from the families, or we get a chance to hear, we we just did an event two weeks ago out of sunshine camp with the building trades. Um, and they're huge supporters of the sunshine camp. And we had two, we had a mother who came to speak and she asked if she could bring her two kids. And so she did. And the kids spoke and to hear from the child's perspective, what camp means to them. I, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. I mean, it was, Um, you know, it it was funny and it was lighthearted and it was a kid speaking, um, but it really moved everybody because you truly saw the impact. So, um, you know, I have a team that I, you know, I always believe a a strong leader builds a team with people who have resources or talents that they don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I tried to build a team of individuals that bring something to the table that helps us be a more dynamic team. But I think it's, we celebrate, right? We, we keep the energy up. We we're on the go. We have had four major, like different events for random things, whether it be rotary over the camp in the last two weeks, every one of us, his energy is still like, all right, we're ready to go. We've got another one on Friday. Like it's, you know, we, we just have things that we're keeping us going, but you leave there and you see, you see the impact that that makes. You see, you see the difference that it makes in, it's going to make in the campers lives. You see, you know, the individual who is being honored or, you know, a wide variety of different things, the organizations that are are there supporting you. And, you know, you leave there and you're like, I get to see the best of humanity. I mean, I truly do. Like I, I, I you know, I, I say, you know, I mean, that I truly get to go home every day and I've seen the best of what the world can offer. And it's exactly. and, and so many, I, wonder, I wonder how many other people we can start sending like away for a weekend. Like I would love to do it with my neighbors, just like get to know them for like over three days because you never really have those opportunities to meet total strangers, to build relationships, to, to find commonality. But I want to go back to your point of we celebrate. I just don't Mm -hmm. think we celebrate enough. I don't think that it's, it's that open, right? We can celebrate, but it's like not all of us. And, and I have a real challenge celebrating my own success, but together I can celebrate all of our successes I think that's really cool and just a really important point of why you're motivated because you are taking the time to stop, pause, and celebrate. And I think that's mm-hmm. that's really, really important. Tracy, I was thinking, you know, if you could go back and it, you know, when you very when you when you became the executive director, would you do anything different that you that you did on your journey from the very get go? Did you learn anything that you could maybe help someone that maybe just took a job that that are in that were in your shoes? So would I do anything differently? I don't think so. Um, but one of the things I did do is it's very hard to come in after my boss, um, you know, was it was a longstanding executive director of the organization. And so I had to come in and be the interim while they were doing the search. And then I had, then I was thankfully selected after five months of um, being the interim. So I had to dance lightly in the interim age, right? Because you had to play the, I really can't change anything because it's not really mine to change. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I don't have the position. Like I didn't even move into the office of the executive director at that time. Like I stayed in my office because I thought I don't have that title yet, right? I'm serving in the capacity for Rotary and I don't want to, um, what's the right word I'm thinking? Like pre- presumption that, that that's going to be my position, right? Like that's, so I wanted to earn that office. So I waited and then, 
you know, really that first year is, is challenging because you're trying to start your initiative and where you think that the organization should go, but you can't come in and just day one, start changing and whacking down trees and like doing this stuff, right? You got to kind of, you got to kind of ease into it and get the read and, and build the trust, right? So now I had to, they all knew me, but they didn't know me in that capacity. So then we had to build the relationships and the trust and then get the support of the board and, and all that, and then be able to express, these are some ideas that I have. And, you know, where your face was, you know, it's, it's just some interesting things happened right when I took over and I'm like, oh, great. Hi, thanks. You left. And here I am. Like, I have to deal with this. And how am I going to deal with this? So, um, you know, I think it was... I think it really was leaning on the people around me that I trusted, that I supported, that were Rotarians too, that were wonderful um, in helping me and helping to guide me. And I'm all about, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If someone's already doing something, reach out, have a conversation. I do it with a lot of other organizations who reach out to me. Look, here's what I have. Take it and modify it and make it work for you. Like this is designed for me, but you can take some of the best nuggets out of this and do it. I mean, really there's very few new ideas out there, right? Like it's, you know, there's, it's someone somewhere has come up with something. So just taking it and, and making it yours is, um, you know, and, and owning it. And, you know, there's always challenging, you know, you have staff turning up. So now you go to, from being peers with people to mm -hmm. being their boss. No. So, you yeah. know, that's always a different challenge, right? right? So right. now you're, um, that's a, that's definitely a hardship when you go that direction. Um, thankfully, I had a good relationship with everybody, but um, you know, we, we eventually some some turnover did happen um, just naturally with um, some retirements and some other things, and and then I was able to come in and build my team. So I kind of was handed a team that mm -hmm. was my predecessor had had brought in, which many of them were wonderful, and I would have you know picked them myself, but this way I was able to bring in my own team and and build yeah. it with the skill sets that I thought were necessary to make the organization a success. When did, you, when did you lose the sense of needing to prove it, I guess? Or did you ever have that sense? I don't think I, no, I think I, I still have I didn't get it. that. I was, I was like, I never, <laughs> yeah, I never picked that up on you because you were like, I wanted to earn it, you know? And I don't, mm -hmm. I, don't I think that's always where, where I've been. It's like, I, I, but it also made me reluctant to ask for help too. Um, because and almost sometimes Tracy almost got trapped in that story where it's like, oh, I've got I've, I've earned everything that I've gotten, you know, and it's like it's me. And it's almost that same self-centered thinking that wasn't my definition, but I ultimately was being. Um, and that's why I always thought performance should speak for itself. And I didn't need to self-advocate. Right? That was uncomfortable. Right. Those skills, critical conversations. And How did you gain the confidence, right? I mean, like, look at you. you. You'd even take the office where most people would have just walked right in, you know? I just see how many other people would have done that whole situation so differently. But how did you come to that point? Like, is, was it your upbringing or was it like your past experiences? It's, it's just awesome to hear. Yeah, I think, you know, definitely um, some in my upbringing and, you know, just, um, you know, had supportive parents and other things. But I just... I think it was just kind of going through, I'd gone through some, um, some challenging times, um, with, with, um, some different folks, uh, earlier in my career there. And, um, you know, I think it taught me, it taught me a lot. It taught me how to handle, um, situations. You know, I was freshly out of college. I mean, I, I had a job at another organization, but then I moved over and I mean, I was really, I was green, right. I was coming in and trying to figure this all out. And, um, so as I, as I evolved and saw that, like, okay, I started getting confidence in myself, like, okay, I, I, I can do this, right? Like, I can do this. And, and continuing to move forward, I think it was, I was up a lot of, against a lot of people for that position, right? So when I was in the interim spot, and some of which were members, and so I had to I had to be able to demonstrate that I had the ability, because when you're in the organization, sometimes you're pigeonholed in the spot you're in, right? Because they only see you as, oh, you ran the camp or you're the, the relationship director. You don't have the capacity, but you know, I had, I had the advanced degree. My predecessor didn't, you know, I had gone back for my master's in public administration. I had a nonprofit management certificate. So I think once people started to, I had to go in and show a different side of me um, because I, I was always more in like the number two, right? So I was, you know, my boss was Bob, I was his number two. And so I had to kind of show them differently. And I think that that's, and it's still sometimes, you know, I, 
sometimes I, it's hard because I am in an office here where, you know, I, it's a, a membership organization. Mm. So some members are more vested in the amount of time that they spend in things than others, right? Well, until you are really president of the club, I don't really think you truly understand all that myself and my team are doing for the organization. And I think once they come in and they see like, holy cow, like you are like, and I'm like, right. And it's not just me. Go look at what Kellyanne and Heather and Myrna and Alicia and Brandy and Jared are doing. Like, go, go look. We have a small but mighty team, but every day we are, have a hundred things coming at us. And, um, and I think it's, you know, you're always constantly just trying to demonstrate what you're doing and showing, because again, it's a membership organization. So you have to always make sure that they understand like, oh, this is what we're doing. This is how things happen. And, and it's, they're not always as, I mean, as it would be like with a regular nonprofit where everybody's an employee, everybody's going to see every step of what's going on, or, or at least have an understanding. You don't necessarily have that. So, you know, I have 355 bosses that are out there in essence, right. Um, who are not afraid to share their opinion and give you what they think <laughs> you should be doing, how you should be doing something. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and, and I have two boards to answer to. So I think it's just always putting on the, and I'm not really putting on, demonstrating that I'm confident in who I am and my yeah. ability that I have. And like I said, and I've learned over time, and this has come, I think, in my maturity, that I'm, I'm okay saying like, I was wrong. I messed up. But I appreciate someone else who can say that too. Don't come to me and like, be like, mm, no, you know what? You messed up. It's okay to say that. Like, it's okay to say I was wrong. And we can then what do we do? And I always tell my team, do not be afraid to make a decision, make the decision, go with it. Right. Like I go and make that decision, run with it. And if it's not the right one, we're just going to, we'll just steer the ship a little differently. That's okay. But don't wait on me to make the decision. You make the decision. Like I want to empower my team to be able to have the autonomy to go out there and do what they know is right. And what is the, what they feel is the right position. And if it's not, like I said, no harm, no foul. You just adjust. It's not, we're not, you know, we're not, it's not life or death, right? Like it's, you know, it's not like, do I pull the cord or not? It's the, you know, we're, we're going to make a decision about this and all right, let's go for it. Let's yeah. try it. I bet they love you for that. You know, those have been my favorite leaders by all time. It's like, dude, Tyler, get the, just get out there and we can make adjustments then. And I love that. Cause I, I don't like just thinking it a lot and waiting. And then that kind of exhausts me a little bit without much, much action and, and the, the leaders kevin and i have have interviewed over the past i guess my goodness four years now man <laughs> um that's how most of them are like we usually ask you know if you're at the uh Canandaigua pool public pool i don't know if there is one but all right would you rather do a cannonball or a swan dive or a pencil off the high dive it's cannonball 100 mm -hmm. of the time yeah. you know no one said a pencil at all, or, or, or a, a beautiful swan guy. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> like, you know, but maybe a gainer here and there. I don't know if y'all do those up there. But um, <laughs> Tracy, I was going to ask you what 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 do you like to get into outside of your job? So, um, my husband and I, I love I love the outdoors. Um, so, like we we're saying in in New York, you embrace it when the weather is beautiful. Um, so, I do a lot of biking. Um, I do a lot of kayaking. My husband and I last year bought a camper. Our boys are in their twenties now, so I'm like, all right, this is great. Like, this is empty nesting. Here we are. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we've actually been doing a lot of camping and traveling around and. We're heading to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in a couple of weeks for two weeks. I have never taken a two-week vacation. I am so excited about this. I am like, oh my God, two weeks. I don't know what I'm, I'm going to know what to do with myself in two weeks, but I'm excited. And um, yeah, so I, I just like to, you know, get out and do stuff like that. Enjoy the outdoors. What does your husband love most about you? <laughs> I have no idea. No, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> I think we're 10 for 10 on that one too, Ted. I think that's I think probably that I'm pretty easy going and that we just we we have fun together. And yeah. so I think, you know, he loves he loves racing and NASCAR racing, modified racing. Well, I I appreciate racing and I'm happy to go along. So yeah. I uh, you know. I'm happy how to pick the, how car has the evolution the to empty nesting been for you. Has it been a big adjustment? It doesn't strike me that that's, I, I, it doesn't sound like you were, your life was your children because you were doing what, what you knew that you were meant to do here on this planet and still doing your thing. Like, well, was it a big adjustment or was it not? Well, 
It was. Um, my boys were very athletic and played football, hockey, lacrosse. And so uh, they both play college football. One's graduated, one's going into a senior year of college football. But so like our, our fall is traveling to football games, right? That's our, that's it. And, you know, Lance, my husband was very involved in like coaching when they were younger. And then I was always sucked into running the booster club or the <laughs> president of the youth football program and, and all these other things. So um, I was always very involved in what they were doing yeah. and um, was there. And I, and then that's what I hope that they look back on mm -hmm. and they realize that like my mom and dad were there. They gave, they made an impact. Like, I hope that one day they look back when they have kids and they realize like how much, how much time we gave up the hundreds of hours I did for, you know, football boosters being the president and, you know, running concession stands and, you know, doing all sorts of other managing of different things. But um, I love that because I was able to be there, right? I wanted to be there because that's important. But I also knew that when, you know, they were going to go on, I wanted to make sure my husband and I had hobbies that we wanted to do yeah. together. And so yeah. I think we were very, very um, conscious and making sure like we went and bought the kayaks first and it was like, okay, let's start doing this. And, um, and we loved it. And it was just something that we just go out and do together. And it was, it was fun. You know, he's a, he's a big golfer. I, I yeah. can appreciate golf at nine holes is my limit. Uh, I play in golf tournaments, but I would much rather like have a drink and watch and then hit and then like, okay, like nine holes is me, but you know, so he's out there, you know, he'll do that stuff. But I, I much appreciate the, you know, being out there and Did going on bike rides. Us how long ago? I mean, have you been technically an empty nester? So um, really my son's, my youngest son. So three years, he's going to be going into his senior year of college. Did so it kick off and I like, I, I like, not an identity crisis, but did it force you to connect back with your like inner self or inner child, you know, like find who you were or you, did you not have that experience? No, I think it was, no, I think it was just making sure that I found, like I had time for me now. So it was yeah. like, okay, the, the worst part, I mean, the hardest part is, I mean, my house is a house where everybody gathers. So it's, you know, I have friends, I have, I have, and now we're back in that summer mode because my son's home from college. So it's like, you know, my door is constantly opening and slamming and I never know who's walking in. I come home to my house sometimes and friends are at the house and my kids aren't even there. So I'm like, oh, hi, hi, you know, but uh, so, you know, I, I have like a, you know, I, I call him my third Tyler's son. in it's my like, fridge again. Yeah. That's, that's where food. they are. They're in the fridge or in my pantry, like eating. Can I have these leftovers? Can I have that? Oh, okay, great. Like I'm usually cooking dinner and throwing an extra plate on the table because there's always somebody there. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just that it was the hardest part was that, right. Was the sitting there the first couple of weeks and being like, nobody's coming through the door. Like you kept waiting for them to like, where's the noise? The house is so quiet. Like what is going on? And then you get to Thanksgiving and they come home and you're like, what are you going back? Yeah. It's so loud. <laughs> you're all go. here. Yeah. You're like, go. And then you get to Christmas break and you're like, you've got it on the calendar. Like what the date is to go back to school. And you're like, I love you, but go, you know, it's, it's okay. And, you know, I think it's, um, I think it's exciting to see, like I, my oldest is 23 and he moved to Florida. Um, and so he went down there and really went down, some buddies went down, went down there. He didn't have a job. So he's in the process of, he's got some jobs, but he's in the process of interviewing. Fingers crossed. He had an interview this morning. So hoping All that right. went really well. Um, but, you know, trying to find himself. But I said, I'm like, I, you know, I was really, actually, I was really proud of him. I said, you know, I'm really proud of you being able to like go and spread your wings and fly. Like, this is your time. This is what you're supposed to do. As much as I hate that I'm in New York and you're in Florida, but you're playing right away. And I drove down with him. We got him set up. It was, a, it was an experience. It's definitely an experience. Um, but we went down, we drove down there and uh, 22 hours in the car. I will never drive to Florida again, ever, ever. You do that once. Yeah. yeah it that. changes you as oh. a human being. I never. That once it was for spring break in college. And yeah. yeah, I swore myself, I would never do that again, Tracy. Yeah. I cannot yeah. Not worth that. it. <laughs> no, so. no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. But you know, I was, I was a little envious of him too, to be honest with you, because I, at that age, probably wouldn't have had that confidence in myself. And he said, you know, mom, I'm going to bet on me. I'm betting on me and I'm going to go and I'm going to go do this. I think like, that's a win as a mom and a parent. Right? And I was I, like, if I have my kid yes, telling me right? he's okay being himself in a world, then he's taking like, that would be probably yeah. one of the things I want to hear back from my two sons. Yes. They're doing like that has, to, that has to be so gratifying. Like, yes, you're in from the football games, but like football games, like we all, my mom was bringing me trophies. Like they were her trophies. I was like, why haven't you gotten rid of these things yet? It's like, 
nine year like first year trophy champion if you think i remember that like it doesn't mean anything to me it, i realized that some of these trophies meant more to them because they remember a lot more than sure. what i was taking away but i think that is such a cool thing to see because yeah and, and i was just talking about this the other day i think that's what's uh, i told the we had interns that started and I said, you know, it's it's hard because you get a lot of passive aggressiveness against you because it's insecurities of the older generations that just wish they could be as badass as you, you know, say what's actually on their mind, you know, and I think that's really encouraging and we, we blame what we don't know or we try to label what we don't know, but most of the people behind closed doors, it's like, yeah, I like flexibility and I always wanted that, but I... Never thought I could ask for it, but you keep doing that because I I'm not gonna say anything. So it's it's really cool to see. That's awesome to hear you hear you say and hear just another example of that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I was I'm really excited for him. I'm excited that he has that confidence and you know I I, I credit him because I didn't at 23. I never would have like picked up and moved all that distance from home oh, and yeah. no okay. never would have done it. So. I moved only two hours. It's it's not mm -hmm. 22, so it doesn't seem as risky. Mm -hmm. Ty, you keep the market. I always tell people wherever you move, you kind of got to take yourself with you, you know. Right. Um, you know, but uh, I guess, Tracy, if you want to kind of tell us about some events coming up as we're in, wrapping up the hour here, sure. the, the floor is yours. Hey, great. Thanks. Well, so we talked about the Sunshine Camp and what an amazing resource it is for our community and for the 2,500 children and adults with special needs that come through every summer, free of charge to their families. They're coming, most of them are there for a week. They're there Sunday through Friday. Um, but then we also talked about being a community resource in the off season. So there's lots of things that we do. Um, we are actually, um, for, for Kevin, you, you probably know this, we're hosting Donnell Hart's um, retirement from his... Um, news broadcasting career, 58 years at Channel 13. And he, we're, he's a member, he's a longstanding member of Rochester Rotary. And so he is, uh, he, we are celebrating this event on Friday, uh, 250 people coming um, and praying for that. But that is uh, that is really another um, reason for somebody who embraced the camp right along, right? His father was a Rotarian, he was a Rotarian, and he wanted the community to see what the camp's all about. So he chose the Sunshine Camp for his celebration. But um, we're getting into, we, we have a clay shooting tournament coming up in August. So uh, we do that at Brooks Gun Club. That's super fun. Uh, you don't have to be a novice uh, target shooter of any, or skeet shooter. You can come, you can be the first time um, behind. It's a lot of fun. There's instructors that teach you. Um, everybody enjoys it. It's a great time and uh, raises money for the camp. We also have a golf tournament um, in the end of August, on August 19th. Um, the clay shooting is August 13th. The um, golf tournament is on August 19th, and that's at Midvale Country Club. That too is a, it's one of the best tournaments in town. Uh, anybody who plays in it will tell you, you always leave with a wonderful Callaway um, clothing item gift. You know? So it's like a, not a, not a little tchotchke thing. You like, it's something you really want you want to wear. Um, and we, you know, we bring some camper families in and some folks, but it really is just a great day. We have a lot, you'll never eat and drink as well as you have during that tournament. So, um, that's, that's a lot of fun going on. And then we always have different things throughout the year. We do a, uh, we do a 5k trail run and we added a beer fest with it last year. So that is super fun. We do that in October and that'll be on October 19th. And that's a great way. And one of the things that we talk about is the Sunshine Camp is a, is a still a hidden secret. And so we've been trying to come up with events that invite the public in, right? So um, obviously the two first two I talked about were at different venues, so they're not. But our trail run was designed to bring runners and then beer drinkers or runners and beer drinkers, whoever you are, um, to come on into the camp and enjoy it and see what the camp has to offer. And it was fabulous. Uh, well received, over 200 people there last year. It was great. We only anticipate that it'll continue to grow. This will be our fourth annual. Um, so we're excited about that. And then we've added things like we, we harvest our own maple syrup. So we sell our maple syrup. So we do a pancake breakfast. We do a breakfast with Santa um, that we started last year and it was so well received. And for many of our camper families, it was wonderful because you had the general public mixed with our camper families. And it was just really nice to see the interaction and that it was, you know, people were comfortable and our campers were comfortable in that environment. And, you know, and, and the Santa was one of the best Santas I've ever seen. Like he was great. And um, he was just really good with people with special needs. And he's like, sign me up. I'm, I'm in, I'll come back. He donated his time. It was great. Um, so we, we are constantly trying to find ways to bring the public in because unless you're part of an organization that comes or happen to be a part of a rotary or know somebody that's taking you there, 
it's not like a park that you can just drive through, right? It's a, it's an, it, you need to have a reason to go there. So um, I think we talked about it earlier in the, in the hour that I said, seeing is believing. Once you come out there and you're like, I had no idea that all of there's six cabins and all these buildings and all these activities. And, you know, we were part of the DIY network, the treehouse guys, they did our treehouse for us. And so <laughs> we're one of the, we're one of the national episodes. If you go back and watch that it. So um, yeah. So it's, it's just really an amazing place. And yeah. like I said, the more people that I can get out there or the more people that learn and hear about us um, is really only to the benefit of the campers that are served. Need an adult camp, y'all. I know. Like, yeah, this... ASAP. ASAP. It's like, yeah, right? I, I want to do that so bad, Ty. We've talked about it before. Like, that would be so fun. I think it's well over, well, what, what, long overdue, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, I just love what you, the back to the, time for me. Um, I really, I really think that's kind of the epitome for, for all of this, you know, but taking that time, like you, you to really celebrate like what you are accomplishing. I think I just heard your year and got exhausted. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, how the heck does her team pull all that off? But then here you are saying, well, look at what, look at what we, look at what this is all for. And I think that's just so powerful. I have to ask, because if I ask like, what your greatest failure was, you're going to tell me, I don't really see failure. So I don't want to ask you no. that. Yeah. What's the greatest lesson that you would share to anyone that you've learned or had to learn? My greatest lesson, I think would just be how to deal with very, um, very tricky situations, right? You're dealing, I'm dealing with a lot of type A personalities in my job. Um, and how do you manage those personalities and, and walk away, making sure that everyone feels heard. Mm -hmm. um, and that's tough. That's hard. And whether you're agreeing or not, you don't want to um, disrespect or dis mm -hmm. not or like disengage or not hear that person. You want to make sure that everyone feels heard because it is a membership organization and people choose to be members of the organization, right? Um, so I think it's just being being comfortable in listening and hearing, but also being comfortable and being able to say, well. The reason it, this, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. However, you know, being able to give the rational thought behind why, why it needs to be this way, or, you know, um, my favorite line for someone though, is when you do have a bunch of complainers is when they want to complain about something is just saying, thanks for volunteering. And then you turn it right back and say, why don't you help step up? And, you know, I have got this opportunity, you know, you, you have some great input on this. Why don't you just be part of this and help me do this? And oh. then. Hell yeah. It's great. Everybody use that line to all those, those Monday morning quarterbacks. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do like that. Sounds like yeah. you want to sign yourself up for that. I will. That's go. right. Thanks. That you have some really great ideas. I'd really <laughs> love for you to be part of this committee and help me accomplish this. Thanks so much. Like I'm going to send you the link and you can be on this committee and I'm going to give you some assignments because it's, you know, in my present, my current president, which I turn over presidents every year. So this is another thing in my job. I'm constantly training and turning someone over. Um, you know, he told me, he's like, I learned that from you. He's like, because he did it the other day in a meeting. And I was like, let you go. And he, and he gets off the meeting and calls me and he goes, I learned that from you. And I'm like, well, you did it very well. So I'm super impressed. <laughs> but, That's amazing. Pulling yeah. them in though. I mean, if they're if they're commenting on, obviously they care. So yeah. But I would say they care enough to say something. So right. why not Pulling bring them right in, in to make them Yeah, you're, I mean, you're getting them over that fear factor of the doing. That's what I just, I right. mean, trying and doing is what I heard a lot from what you're doing uh, there at, at, at the organization. And I think that's so exciting. You go continue to evolve. We'll continue to see new events and different events um, and not just your traditional golf outing. So it's exciting. Right. So I so appreciate this conversation. I so appreciate you, um, Ty. I'm I'm done. I, I I really enjoyed Tracy today. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. You made it easy, Tracy. This this was oh, this thanks. was easy. <laughs> you yes. guys did too. I was waiting to get the real big stumper though. I was like, oh god, they're gonna throw something out here. I'm gonna have no, no idea, and I'm gonna have to say to you, don't record it. <laughs> I don't no, know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this was really great, Kevin Tyler. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to to talk with you guys, but also to share about our, you know, the Sunshine Camp and what it does in our community. So I appreciate yes. that.